Welcome to Chef's Paradise Live. I'm Walid. Today we're going to be talking about whetstone sharpening and what that entails. There's a lot of noise out there as to how to sharpen a knife. The best method is whetstones. Uh, there are a variety of different whetstones and the lower the grade is the lower the grit, just like sandpaper. So if it's lower grit, you're going to be dealing with a lot of sharpening. It's going to be removing a lot of the first layers of metal. And then the higher you go in grit, so closer to the 2000s, 3000s and 4000s, you're going to be getting into a lot of the polishing. I've got two stones here. This stone is a 500 grit, meaning that it's a very, very, very gritty. It's not very smooth. It's got a lot of texture to it. So this is going to be taking off the first layer of metal. So what you want to do with sharpening as, uh, as on a whetstone is you want to be taking off the first layer of metal and putting on a brand new edge. You're not sharpening the existing edge. You're destroying the first edge and you're putting on a new edge. Okay. So you want to start with a really low grade. Something to pay attention to is obviously the metallurgy in which the steel composition is composed of. So certain knives have uh, VG10 steel, Swedish blue steel, depends on what you go for. So here we have a variety of different kinds of knives. Some of them are really pretty. You got all these really fancy Damascus grains. This is great uh, for sharpening. It's really good for day to day. I'm a fan of true Japanese steel and I'm a fan of Swedish blue steel. So. The reason I'm showing you all of these is that you see the different length of these types of knives. Each of these have a different stroke represented in terms of the stoning. So when you're going to stone your knives, you want to take the knife and you want to work it into a, into a position in which you're only working in certain sections of the knife. You don't want to be taking on the entire knife to sharpen it when, you, when you're at the beginning phases of things. When you get a little bit more advanced, you can take on the entire stroke of the knife. That's maybe for a different day. I'm going to be sharpening my largest knife and my smallest knife just to kind of explain to you the difference in the strokes needed. So now we're going to get into the angle of approach. So imagine this is 90 degrees with the board and then you want to take it half to 45 and then you want to take it half again to 22. So that's approximately where you need to be. And a good rule of thumb is that if you put your hand on the whetstone and you put your thumb right next to it, it should lay flat about halfway through your stone. And then all you're going to do is be working the blade up and down the stone in evening degrees of angle of approach. Continue to work the knife in the segments that you're looking for, 15 strokes per segment. Keep adding water on the stone as it gets dry, as this is the form of lubricant that's needed for the friction of the knife. All right, so now that I've done both sides of the knife, I want to just apply another layer of water. And then all you're going to do is take your little knife and you're going to do the exact same thing. 15 strokes on each side with the same angle of approach, making sure that the angle of approach never falters. Go slow, don't speed up if you don't need to speed up. Take it nice and slow at first. Eventually, you're going to be able to get that angle really dialed in. All right, so now that we're done with the 500 grit stone, we're going to move on to, this is a 1500 grit stone. And like I said, the higher you go in grit, the more of a polished edge you're going to get. So the first level of these two knives was to take off the first layer of, of metal. Now I'm going to be reshaping the edge with a higher polished metal. So the higher you go, so typically for beginners, you want to be buying a 250 stone, a 750 stone and a 1000 stone. Be cautious when you're choosing what stone to buy. If you choose a really high grit stone and your angle of approach is incorrect, you're gonna create a really fragile edge and you could create immense fractures in the actual metallurgy of the blade. And you, you could actually lose your knife. So pay attention. Angle of approach and grit stone is very, very important. So the same practice with the higher grit stones. It doesn't make any difference. Make sure you have lots of water on your stone. And then the same thing, work it into sections. And then each section is gonna get an even 15 strokes at the right angle of approach. So I'm done sharpening my Hattori. I'm gonna be moving on to my little knife. So now I'm still back on the 2000. I'm gonna give this guy 15 strokes in each direction. And then we're gonna be moving on to our honing rods. So I'm just gonna wipe off any of this black stuff off of the bottom of my stone. You'll see some black residue on your knife. That's completely fine. Give it a good rinse. Never put your knives in the dishwasher. So then what you'll see to my left here is that I have two, two honing rods. So these are not sharpening rods, these are honing rods. Uh, the surface of the metal is quite uh, porous and requires a lot of delicate work. A stone can get you to that point. This all is going to do is remove any burrs that exist. So burrs is a terminology of loose steel. All the steel kind of accumulates at the tip of the knife. All this do is going to reline the edge, but the edge is actually put on by the stone. 
So it's a common housewife's tale that this actually sharpens the knife. It actually doesn't. It doesn't do anything. All it does is just realign the blade into a more straight nature, okay? So here I have a, this is a diamond steel. So this guy has a higher micron grit. This guy's going to put a much higher polished edge on my knife. And then this is just a traditional steel. This is a traditional honing rod. Uh, this guy, not a lot can go wrong with it. Just make sure you're holding it properly. Best practice for this is you see a lot of people, they're sharpening their knives towards them. That's how we do it as professionals. But if you're at home, I highly recommend starting with an away motion, an away motion from you. Do not go towards you for now. And then the importance is, is that you're continuing with the same angle of approach. The angle of approach is key. So if you're doing 20 degrees-ish on the stone, you should be doing the exact same angle on this. You will counteract any work you do on this if you don't do this properly. So these have to be the same angle. So you can continue to do it at the same angle away from your body. And if you don't feel comfortable about alternating, you can easily just do one side eight times and you can do the other side eight times. I hope this session was informative for you. Um, it is a, a lot of work uh, to keep your knives in good condition. Um, the importance of keeping your knives in good condition is that they'll last you a very long time. A good chef knife should last you anywhere from 10 to 15 years with the right care and right methods. Um, the idea is that you continue to care for your knives in the right fashions and you continue to learn. Turn on some music, it's really zen-like. You're able to kind of just zone out and take 20 minutes every three to four weeks. Thank you for joining us, Chef's Paradise Live. I'm Chef Walid.